You think Jesus can do anything right here in Las Vegas, Sin City? I believe that what God is doing is he's creating an eternal testimony. And what we know is when we can come together under a spirit of unity, nothing will be impossible. Hello and welcome to another episode of Las Vegas United. I am your host, Aaron Pino. You know, here at Las Vegas United, we are partnering with God to create an eternal testimony of his goodness, mercy, and power right here in the Las Vegas Valley. And what's amazing is what we get to do. We get to bring on air pastors, community leaders, entrepreneurs, uh, politicians who are doing amazing things in our community. And today is no different. We have someone in our community who's making a difference um, that I'm going to give you the opportunity to hear more about what they have going on. Uh, but before we do that, I want to say thank you for watching this. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule. I know many people are watching this on Keen 17. And then we also have people who watch this on YouTube, Instagram, uh, Spotify, iTunes. Listen, however you're watching this, could you do me a favor? And would you either set a reminder if you're watching this on Keen 17 to tune in during our broadcast? Or if you're watching this on YouTube, can you hit the subscribe button down below, comment, and let us know where you're watching from. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Spotify, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. That's going to help us get the word out, what God is doing right here in our very own backyard. Well, without further ado, I'm excited about today's guest because it is something that I believe is transforming communities and uh, really what our, our, our whole valley here in Las Vegas. Uh, but would you help me welcome Eric Culverson this afternoon? Eric, great having you on the uh, show today. Thank you, Pastor. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. The pleasure is all mine. I'm very excited to be talking about what we're going to be talking about today because uh, the organization that you're with is making an, an amazing impact. Uh, but before we dive into that, before we talk about that, I like for our guests just to kind of get to know the person across the table from me. And so if you will, go ahead and tell us a little bit more about yourself, uh, how long you've been in Vegas, how you landed up here, and uh, yeah, family, kids, all that good stuff. You know, let okay. people get to know you a little bit more. Okay. All right. Thank you. So my name is Eric Culverson, and I moved to Las Vegas in 2004, coming here from Southern California. Mm. I'm originally from Atlanta, Georgia. All right. So in a lot of ways, I still think of that as home. Mm. I'm still very much tied to all the professional sport franchises from Atlanta. So you know, it's not unusual to see me walking around town and being the only person in an Atlanta Braves jersey. You know? but, yeah. yeah. In fact, when I was a kid growing up in Atlanta, I used to actually work at the stadium as a kid, like selling peanuts and popcorn and oh, cons wow. concessions. So my attachment to the Atlanta sports franchises go, goes back quite a bit. So I moved here in 2004, coming from Southern California, primarily because I was looking to get back into the housing market at that time. And I looked at different cities, different locations, and I decided on Vegas. Now, like a lot of people, I'd been to Vegas in the past, mm -hmm. you know, on vacation and for other outings. So <laughs> I had to like seriously ask myself, like, could you really live in Las Vegas and not go, <laughs> not go broke in two months? Hello. Yes, yeah. sir. And um, you know, once you're here, of course, you realize that you will always have the opportunity to spend money, waste money, do whatever. But you know, ultimately, you really just settle into your life. Mm -hmm. And for me, that life is primarily business. I am an engineer and an engineering consultant. I run a training company called Technically Speaking Incorporated. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing customer support and training for one of the global semiconductor companies for about 25, 30 years at this point, training their customers on their tools and technology different design methodologies and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So that's my primary business. Mm -hmm. Wow. Awesome. You know, uh, I do a lot of these interviews and I get to sit across the table from a lot of people. And one thing that I love is how people land up in Las Vegas. They just land up here from different parts of the country. Uh, 
as I'm thinking about it, I don't even know if we've had anybody who has said, I was born and raised here. <laughs> you know, it's like people come yeah. to Las Vegas uh, for whatever reason they come to Las Vegas. But the people who sit across the table from me, they come to Las Vegas and almost all of them <laughs> line up doing something different than what they originally thought they were going to come here for. Ah. Uh, and I find out a lot of people actually f- f- figure out and fulfill a portion of their purpose here in Las Vegas. And so uh, hearing your story, I think it's the same for you. You're, you're involved with a couple of different things. You're a businessman, entrepreneur, uh, an engineer, which means you are really, really smart. <laughs> uh, but here you are, you're in Vegas, you're doing your thing. And uh, you get involved in an organization here that I believe is making an impact in our city. Uh, would you take a moment just to tell people, what that organization is. Yeah. So the organization is Dads in Schools. And I got involved really just a few months ago. So Pastor Troy Martinez mm-hmm. is the founder of the organization and he has pretty much set the original infrastructure in place and created the agreement with the Clark County School District. So I heard about the organization just a few months ago and they were doing recruitment and they were doing the first events right at the end of the school year last year. So I volunteered, showed up, and this was in North Las Vegas. And I indicated to Pastor Troy at that time that if they needed additional help with organization of volunteers, because having been in both the military and in business, I know that it's one thing to have a concept, mm-hmm. but ultimately there's a lot of detail to pull it together and, oh, yes. and ultimately deploy uh, different resources. So he took me up on that. And now I am the volunteer coordinator wow. for the organization. So I have the primary role of helping others who want to be involved, who want to commit to the mission and purpose that we serve, uh, helping them get scheduled, communicating with the schools to find what time of day would our volunteers be best served on that particular campus? And then just this constant process of communication and coordination between the individual volunteers, the school, as we build mm. the program infrastructure, which is what we're doing at this stage. Wow. Awesome. So you, you, you are not only a smart man, you are a busy man at the same time trying to get this off the ground, which I mean, you guys are already moving and shaking and doing what you're doing here in Vegas. Uh, That's incredible, man. Thanks for serving our community in in the capacity that you are. And also, thank you for serving our military as well. Uh, I'm grateful for that. So thank you for your service. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So I hear the term dads in schools. Uh, It's pretty plain and simple, but make it plain for the people who are listening and watching. What is that exactly? So Dads in Schools is a grassroots volunteer organization that assembles teams of parents. So we actually really go beyond dads, but we tend to think of dads as being the principal uh, people that would participate at the school level and provide the type of presence that we're looking for. And that presence really is one of not just enhancing and extending whatever the school security apparatuses, like schools have campus security monitors and schools have sometimes police that are on duty. But what we're looking to do is to put parents in school as positive role models. So the organizational mission and our statement is prevention through presence. Mm. And the prevention that we're talking about is, of course, violence. And we can all agree that today the incidence of violence Students against students, students against staff Mm -hmm. is just increasing to points where it makes um, the entire academic environment just absolutely different and less certain. It's going to ultimately affect the quality Mm -hmm. of learning, uh, attendance and every other aspect of the public education process. So dads in schools is a direct means to address that. Mm. So so. To sum it up, when we're on campus, we become an extension of just the uh, eyes and ears that are there to not so much um, add additional discipline, although if the situation arose where that was appropriate, then a particular volunteer may indeed do that. Like I have broken up two fights in the time that I've been on campus. But 
you know, schools have a lot of disciplinary things that they look at from clothing, uh, you know, code violations to, to other things. We don't really try to be there for all of that. More than anything else, we're really trying to engage with students mm -hmm. to be positive role models, to actually be the dad as, a, as an extension of a parent at home, or perhaps there's not even a father figure at home. Mm -hmm. And we want students to see that there are caring, committed mm. male individuals who are willing to donate time to be there mm -hmm. and just uh, engage with students in a, in a respectful, positive manner on an ongoing basis. So one of our goals, quite frankly, is to have volunteers that will be at a particular site on an ongoing basis. Now, you can imagine the challenge we have since there yeah. are so many different schools and we're pulling volunteers from different locations, but ultimately, we want to build relationships. And those relationships are both with students and staff. And yeah. that requires consistency. We want to have the same people at those sites as much as possible so that over time, there's a level of familiarity mm -hmm. that builds. There's a level of comfort mm -hmm. and goodwill and just mutual interaction. So that's what Dads in Schools is all about. Wow. Uh, incredible. I mean, absolutely yeah. incredible. You know, I've been in, in uh, some of the meetings with Pastor Troy whenever he's cast the vision of, of dads in schools. Uh, and I didn't realize the need that was present in our school system for just a presence, like how you're saying, just to be present on campus, right. to be a positive role model for, for the students that are there. Uh, you know, tell us, because uh, I've I've heard the stories. You know, I've been in the, in the in the in the rooms, but for some of our audience who hasn't heard this, tell us some of the impact that are some of the uh, the things that are going on in our school that requires a presence there, and how you guys are impacting and making a difference. Okay, well, if you look at the statistics and you just look at the data that's coming out, hey, oh, actual incidents of violence is increasing. Pretty much you know, post-pandemic, since everybody started once again coalescing in uh, in public places you know, across the board. And it's a societal type thing. It's not just schools, but what happens in the broader society ultimately trickles down into the schools. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot less civility. Mm -hmm. There's more uh, anger. There's more willingness to just to just fight and, mm -hmm. and, and more anger. So, again, having the presence there of the dad's program and those volunteers is simply a way of mitigating that. It makes it way less likely that anything happens. I mean, and for us, that's sort of our measure of success because to the extent that we can make the environment safer, mm -hmm. then everybody benefits, the individual students, because typically there's gonna be you know, some students that want to create problems, but for the most part, the other students are either neutral or they're really there very much invested in their own educational mm -hmm. well-being. And the threat of violence undercuts that for them. So to the extent that we can mitigate even the possibility, then everybody benefits. Mm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> it does seem like the violence has gone up in yeah. recent years, especially after the pandemic. I mean, here you are for for basically two years, more or less, all of our students are at home learning it, <laughs> looking at a computer, and then we have them come back into in-person um, school classes. <clears throat> and I just feel like in society right now, everything is, everyone's just so tense. Right. Like it's every, everyone's just like, it's almost like everyone's just ready to pop. And then you throw in Teenagers, hormones, uh, you know, social uh, media, social media. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> yeah. No wonder uh, things are popping off in the school and no wonder there's a need there. So um, I've I, I heard you say, you know, you've already broken up two fights. What are some testimonies that have come out of dads being in school? We are just starting to gather data. And you know, some of it is anecdotal, some of it is just you know, our own reporting mechanism. And we're trying to see where the impact is. And 
part of that depends on how we're actually being deployed. Because once again, let's say you take a school like Valley, Valley mm -hmm. High. We're not really expected at Valley to be a direct extension of the campus police or anything like that. The emphasis, once again, is on building relationships. So if we are actually involved with any kind of altercation or any type of incident, then what we want to do is bring that to the attention of the appropriate school officials so that they can handle it. They can actually take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. What we want to do more than anything else is be there to prevent violence. And again, if it starts and we're right there, that we will absolutely get involved. Now, having said that, there are some caveats because there is a working memorandum of understanding with CCSD and it establishes some broad guidelines for how we engage with students. Mm -hmm. So for instance, no touching. Mm -hmm. Well, that really means for us, you know, no getting too close to anyone in terms of like a hug or a mm -hmm. side hug, but we regularly uh, invite and we're open to just greetings, handshake, fist pump, high five, something like that. And once again, if an actual incident occurs and we have the opportunity to intervene, then common sense dictates that you do what you can because oh, yeah. you don't want that to escalate any further. You don't want some child to potentially suffer unnecessary harm when you were there and you had the opportunity to break it up. Mm -hmm. So so to that extent, we kind of, we, we blur the lines a little bit in terms of when it comes to no touching, if yeah. it means that we can separate two combatants, you know, without either one of them feeling like uh, we're, we're taking sides. And speaking of not taking sides, one thing to note about our official uniform when we're at work, it's, it's a referee jersey. Mm. It has the Datsun School logo, but it's a very easily identifiable, vertically striped ref jersey. And that connotation is that we're there, we're completely and utterly neutral, but if anything happens, we will intervene. But more than anything else, we don't want anything to happen. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping, again, that just our presence um, ensures that nothing that does happen. Absolutely, absolutely. So how many schools are there in Clark County? How many schools are is uh, dads and schools in right now? All right, so again, we're at an absolute infancy in terms mm -hmm. of growing the program. So out of the approximately 300 or so campuses from North Las Vegas to Las Vegas to Henderson, there are approximately 80 schools that have signed up mm -hmm. for the program. That means that their principals have, um, have been willing to have the Datsun School volunteers on their particular site. Of that number, we are operating right now in about maybe 10 schools. And that could be anywhere from having four or five regular volunteers to perhaps a single volunteer. Mm. One of the caveats for us is that each volunteer must complete a comprehensive background check. Yeah. So that means they have to do fingerprinting. They have to do the same steps that school staff would need to complete. And for that reason, and we can't just say anybody who's interested, mm -hmm. you know, have at it, you know, have access to the yeah. campus. You know, we need to obviously protect the integrity of the school environment. And we need to make sure that people that are representing this program are going to be able to pass the same type mm -hmm. of uh, background check that anybody else. But that also means that we won't have access the volunteers until they complete that process. Mm -hmm. And that has been one of the major yeah. impediments for us. So out of that total number of people we have in the database, number of people that have expressed interest in this, which numbers pretty close to 1,200, we're still working with about 25 to 30 consistent volunteers. Mm -hmm. And that just means that we have a lot of people that either haven't initiated that process mm -hmm. or haven't successfully yeah. completed. <laughs> so, so, so the answer to your question, the, yeah. the, short, the short answer is that we're in about 10 sites right now, yeah. but that is growing each week. And that's incredible. Cause I mean, I highly respect the fact that people have to be background checked. 
uh, not just for the reputation of the organization, but also for the protection of the community. Yes. Uh, you know, that is uh, that is paramount because at the end of the day, you're doing this because you want to make a difference in the community. You want to protect the community. Right. You want to serve the community. And so I totally understand. Uh, hey, listen, we're not just going to put any old Joe Blow in here wanting right. to run these hallways. They need yeah. to, they need to be, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? They need to, they need to be, yeah. uh, you know, people that we, that we approve and the school approves as well. I think that yeah. is, uh, that is awesome. And that's, that's needed, you know? Uh, and at the same time, you still need more people. You still need more involvement. Correct. You still need more, uh, men there who are saying, you know what? I want to be in, uh, in the schools and making a difference as well. So uh, I'm just telling people right now, if you're listening to this and if you're a male, look, uh, get a hold of these guys and go through the process because Las Vegas needs you. Okay. Las Vegas needs you. Yes. And so we have dads in school. What about the moms? Cause I can, okay. hear, I can hear people talking like this is amazing. Dads in school. What, what about the moms out there that want to get involved as well? And they are welcome to do so. Mm -hmm. In fact, you know, for all the reasons that you just mentioned, we need as many committed That's community right. volunteers as possible. So both dads and moms. So even though the program is entitled uh, Dads in Schools, it's quite frankly, it's really parents mm -hmm. more than anything else. So any moms that want to participate, they can. And they will be deployed the same as the men. Mm -hmm. So... That's awesome. That's awesome. So moms, listen, you, you are, you are invited to this as well. Mom's on a mission. I heard Pastor Troy say that one time <laughs> I was in a meeting and, and someone said, well, what are, and someone got up and said, well, what about us moms? And he goes, we love mothers too. And we're going to deploy mothers on mission. And so it's like how you're saying it's, it's really for um, anybody. Cause I mean, we are, our, our young people, they need a model. They need right. to see, they need to see like, hey, there, there's, things don't have to be this way. And there's people actually out there that actually care enough for them right. to take time out of their schedule to come and just be a presence at the school and just to let them know, hey, we're, we're there for them. I think that's all. That's incredible. Right. And in that context, it really extends beyond even parents. There are lots of just concerned are responsible, civic-minded adults that are actually helping with this program, people who don't necessarily have kids in school at this time. Um, and their participation is as welcome as anyone else. Mm -hmm. So this program is really unique in that it creates this opportunity for so many members of the community to demonstrate that level of, of commitment and support and caring to actually put that into action mm -hmm. to become part of an organization that is inherently doing good things. I mean, without argument and to be able to volunteer on a pure availability basis. It's, it's not going to we're not going to demand any more time than anyone can actually give us. In fact, typically the way it looks, let's say, for instance, at um, you know, Dale Webb Middle School, which is where I spend a lot of my time we are covering the lunch period mm -hmm. and they run three separate lunches. So it runs from about 940 to approximately 1225. So just a little bit less than three hours. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we actually ask each school beforehand, we say, look at your school day. You have the morning period when obviously there's a crowd, people are arriving, a lot of school buses, a lot of parents. You have the lunchtime and then you have closing bell which is like the morning in reverse. Mm -hmm. When would the dads and schools volunteers be of the greatest value to you? And we then turn around and ask our volunteers to be able to commit to a maximum three hour window at any particular mm -hmm. site. So with that in mind, you know, literally anyone, mm -hmm. anyone in the community that you know, successfully passes the background check and wishes to get involved, wishes to make a difference, and to be present, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. is all we're really asking our volunteers to do. You know, we welcome their participation. All right. That's awesome. So, Eric, if people want to get involved or, or learn more information about dads in schools, what is the best way for them to do that? The best way is to start with the website. So 
dadsinschool.com. No, no punctuation, they're just dadsinschool.com. So fill out the, just a basic inquiry. And from there, it's so important that they move forward to the background check. Now the background check is actually through the Clark County School District. Okay. So once they click on the appropriate link on the website, then they can begin that process. Mm -hmm. And they'll need to schedule time to go in and do that. And there is a $55 fee, but that fee is refundable. Mm -hmm. Once you are designated to a particular school, once you've completed all the, the entry requirements and you're actually serving at a particular school, then you can apply for reimbursement from that school, if mm -hmm. indeed that matters to you. Mm -hmm. okay. But that's the starting point, is the website dadsandschools.com. Dadsandschools.com. Listen, if you're watching this right now, I want to just challenge you. Uh, to put your money where your mouth is or put, you know, put like put some feet to action. I know many people here, they say, well, we got to change our community. We got to we got to move forward and make a difference. This is a very practical way that you can partner with this organization to make a difference. And so go to that website, dadsinschools.com and uh, put some feet to what you've already been feeling like you're supposed to be doing. Uh, can I say it to you like that? Well, I just did. Okay. Don't be mad at me. You can email us at, uh, let's see, we can, uh, uh, CTN dot whatever. You know what I mean? Anyway, I, I, you know how, how I am, but listen, this is a very practical way and our young people need you and you can make a difference in our community. Eric, thank you so much for being here on the show today. I'm really grateful that you came. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. And listen, I'm so grateful for you for tuning in this week at Las Vegas United. Listen, go to dadsinschool.com and begin to make the difference that you want to see in our valley. It's a practical way to do that. So anyway, thanks for watching and we will see you next time right here on Las Vegas United. God bless you. Our show is hosted by Pastor Aaron Pino of Overflow Church. To learn more about him and his ministry, please visit overflowchurch.co. The guest this week is Eric Culverson of Dads in Schools. For more information, visit dadsinschools.com. Our show is directed by Javier Moreno. Production assisting by Julie Moreno. Edited by Javier and Jalen Moreno. Las Vegas United is produced by CTN Vegas, the Las Vegas location for the Christian Television Network. For more information about CTN Vegas and our show, please visit ctnvegas.com.